I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night. Welcome to another very special live edition of Average Mics. We are on episode six. Is that correct? Yeah, let me just check reference here. We are on episode six. We are streaming live on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey. I think Twitter's working. I think Kick's working. And I think Twitch is there. And I think DLive is there. And YouTube is basically where we do average mics because it's your average talk show with your average discussion and your average, average, blah, 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 blah. And uh, average coverage and, and average everything. Guys, I have an explosive, explosive show for you guys here today. And I'm very excited to be here. And the, the, uh, uh, the comments are rolling really nicely here on YouTube. The world is messed up, says DDMS. And then Joe is saying there's a video of the shooting on X. So people are already in discussion here real quick on the live uh, transmission here on the YouTube side of things. Let me ro roll over to Rumble and see. And I got zero people on there now, so no big deal, guys. Average Mike's is a new show, so I got to build confidence with the people uh, with Average Mike's just so people could see that we are consistent. Oh, we had a little bit of an issue, uh, but we got everything sorted here, and the chat is starting to move now on all platforms. All right, folks, what is happening? Guys, if you can, don't forget to tune in to Mike in the Night. Our main platform is Rumble. We are heavily shadow banned on there, but Mike in the Night, there we are live right there. So Mike in the Night um, right here is, there you go. There's Mike in the Night right there. And you guys could watch it every Saturday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So if you guys get time, 7 p.m. Pacific time, we are live every Saturday. And I've been doing this since 2016. And we're again, there it is right there on, on Odyssey. Uh, we are also on Odyssey. Artbydano.com, artbydano.net, not your typical art. KiwiRadio.nz, don't forget to check them out. And there are replays of Mike in the Night in MP3. I'm not sure, is it here? Yes, it is. Real Mike Martin's call in show. So, Mike in the Night, you could find replays there. Mark Crispin Miller, forward slash, a uh, substack, forward slash at Mark Crispin Miller one to find out who died suddenly. You can find all kinds of updates on there. And the most powerful glutathione on the market. Here it is, folks. And I've been taking it. I leave a link into the live chat right now. The live chat is, we already got 85 people watching on YouTube. Let me paste that there and get people, if they want to support the transmission, to buy the glutathione uh, from us. And it's working. I've been on it. I'm on my third bottle right now, and I'm... I, I don't know. It's not a placebo, so it's I don't know what to tell you guys. And if you're watching this on replay, it's in the description. And I want to thank everyone that's bought me a coffee. Thank you so much for buying me a coffee. I got a flood of, of donations after that last mic in the night, guys. Thanks for supporting your favorite transmission here. And um, the comments are moving really well. So many evil in the world these days. Uh, what else? Illegal wars going on. So the, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to catch up with the comments in a second for you guys. It is the Mike of the Night talk show. I do have uh, um, just regular headlines I want to go over before. We need to, so here it is, Canada, Canada's, Canada's dream is coming true, folks. They are basically, here it is, Canada's dream is coming true where, the front page of every of every uh, news outlet in Canada is reporting the war in Israel. And this is a dream come true for, for Canadian media because Canadian media is going to work really hard. Australian media, all other media, they're going to work super hard so that they can basically hide the last three years. They Every administration in the world wants the last three years to disappear. peer. They need the last three years to disappear. Because the last three years have been an absolute nightmare. And, okay, so we got a lot of people here in the comments. Uh, the comments are moving really nicely. We got 126 people watching us live. Thanks for for uh, joining us on Average Mike. So 21 Israeli Canadian jumped on a grenade to save fiancé during a Hamas attack, family says. Uh, 21 Canadians safe in Jordan after fleeing West Bank government concern, uh, c confirms. Thanks to P. Foxo for sending me five euros here on Average Mike. 
and developing breaking news updates on day 10. So this is what Western media wants. They need to flood the headlines with war overseas because they want the last three years to disappear. If that makes any sense for you guys. They want the last three years to disappear. peer. All right, so let's jump into our first headline here. BRICS now richer than G7, says Putin. The Russian president says the economic group is crucial to the formation of the multipolar world. The BRICS nations have taken overtaken the G7 states in terms of the purchasing power parity, PPP. Uh, of their populations. Russia President Vladimir Putin said on Monday in an interview with China and the media group, and he went on to say, as for BRICS, at the time of the summit in Johannesburg in August, the ratio of the economies of the G7 countries and the BRICS countries was already in favor of BRICS in terms of purchasing power parity, Putin said. BRICS currently comprises Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, but the group will be joined in January by Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE will be joining. The G7 Club of Ind Industrialized and, and Developed Countries consists of the U.S., Canada, U.K., France, Italy, Germany, and Japan. So it's very interesting how that this was all formulated after World War I, the formulation started. And then during after World War II, you started to see it really start to take sides. The Cold War kicks off. The Korean conflict. You got all kinds of stuff kicking off. And uh, what else is... Wow, comments are moving nicely here, folks. Okay, let's keep going here. So what do we tell you? We warned you about this. And this is the upcoming aftermath here that we're going. So we went into telling you guys five years ago, China going off the petrol dollar. U.S. dominance is coming to an end. BRICS nations to use gold back currency. And then I and then we warned you back then also new Amero dollar to be a reality. So the answer to this is BRICS now richer than G7 Putin. The answer to this is what we said here seven years ago, the new Amero dollar to be a reality in North America, looking to implement digital token by 2021. So I was off on that prediction, but my opinion, US dollar becomes de-dollarized. Brazil is abandoning the US dollar. And as this that happens, Dilma Rousseff is creating a gold back that was the previous, previous three administrations ago in Brazil, backed BRICS nation currency. That will force, and then I guess, again, it's to force the, the, the Amero to unify because if the Amero, Amero unifies, if United States, Canada, and Mexico unify, then basically what could happen um, is it could rival this currency that they're putting together. But the problem is the Western countries actually need to unify and actually start producing, fabricating, exporting, and creating a healthy GDP right? So there it is right there, folks, for you guys. And we talked about oil wars ahead via BRICS. They are working towards a fake energy shortage, refinery closures ahead five years ago. And in my opinion, as cities go broke, they will need to fund their BS spending by creating fake shortages to allow for more hidden taxation as inflation creeps in. I have been bombarded with emails. I want to thank somebody for sending me a super... Did someone sent me... I think something flashed on the screen here. Uh, thanks for the super chat, folks. And... That is a big deal here, folks. Let's move on. So, again, there's other avenues working on the sidelines or in the back ends, working to obviously unite and de-dollarize the U.S. And um, the U.S. right now is spread very thinly. So, Gary, Gary B. is saying U.S. troops were issued... Uh, ready to deploy order over the weekend yikes so yeah it's we're going to we're going to start to see there we might go into hot war because they need a hot war for the last three years to go away folks they need a major hot war to the last three years is just an absolute disaster for many administrations around the world so they need the last three years to go away all right so let's do a very special Let's jump into a very special censorship. We've been covering censorship on Mike in the Night now for years. Uh, censorship special. And I want to thank um, 
everyone for tuning in and being part of this section of the channel because it's very important. We've been doing it more on Mike in the Night, but now we're doing it on average mics. So DC Judge Tim Kelly rejects Owen Schroer's appeal. Infowars host must enter prison on October 24th for speech crimes. <sighs> My prayers go to Owen, an American in American soil, people. Remember, we're in the Commonwealth. We're in Canada. Now, if you're watching this across the Commonwealth, which you should be, because I've been distributing this across the Commonwealth since uh, trends in the housing market in 2014, this is major. And for it to happen to Americans, I would expect something like this that's happening to Owen Troyer to happen first in Australia, then in New Zealand. At this level, I'm saying. It's happened? Yes. I'm not saying it didn't happen in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, and the UK. I'm not saying it didn't. But at this magnitude level, where somebody is front and center, and most a lot of people know who this man is, for them to to do that, and then now it could be widely publicized. I feel so bad for this guy. You have no idea how I feel for this man and what he's going through. It's it's got to hurt to be in a country where you have a clear cut declaration of ind uh, uh, independence, a bill of rights, a constitution, and and you have everything. That's clear cut. So you could basically know where you're stepping over boundaries. You could basically know how far you could take things if you need to. Okay? So this is very important, folks. So let's go here. Speech crimes. Infowars reporter and war room host Orrin Schroyer was sentenced to 60-day prison back in September in a D.C. kangaroo court for his action on January 6, 2020 and before. Owen stood outside the Capitol on January 6th and warned Trump supporters not to go inside the building. And yes, he did. And we have footage of it. We were playing it on Mike in the Night for you guys to let you guys know what was happening. It is incredible. Now, Owen stood outside the Capitol. Okay, Owen also frequently spoke out against the stolen 2020 election. And it was stolen we knew it was stolen. We knew it was a selection even before anyone went to the polls. They were doing everything humanly possible to make sure that Donald Trump didn't get reelected. So they selected Biden. And this is Amerifornia we've been talking about, right? Where America will become like Australia, New Zealand, the UK, where it becomes severely unaffordable, make it almost next to impossible for an average family with average full-time workers to afford any property in their own country. And that's Amerifornia for you guys. Wagons East. We've been talking about the Wagons East phenomena. Also frequently spoke out against the 2020 uh, stolen election. Department of Justice prosecutors sought prison time against Owen for his speech crimes against, uh, and of course, the D.C. judge agreed. Owen Schroyer pleaded guilty in June to a single Class A misdemeanor of entering and remaining in a restricted building grounds on January 6, 2021. He initially he was initially charged in August 2021, eight months after remaining outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6 and warning Trump supporters not to enter the Capitol along with Alex Jones. And I think Alex Jones was in the back of a pickup truck with a megaphone, if I remember correctly, warning people not to go in because it's a trap, right? After nearly two years of fighting charges and, uh, related to his presence outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, Owen made the decision to plead guilty to a lesser charge. Schroyer allowed the government to review his social media accounts, likely, uh, likely looking for any scrap of incriminating wrong think they could find. Wrong think. Wow. So this is our... Let's keep going. We have lots of... of so now... This is my angle on this. This whole disruption in the Middle East that's been happening since the time of Moses is now a massive distraction for that. Remember that video I put up, guys, a few weeks ago? The tsunami of censorship that's going to come up now? The tsunami of censorship? Well, we got our censorship news here for you guys. New ID system to be pushed on Austrians this December. And a major threat to privacy is lurking behind the upcoming digital revolution in Austria, which seeks to bring a new national digital ID system called ID Austria. The Austrian government prepares for a complete digital overhaul from December 5th. The move has sparked concerns over political overreach and privacy infringements in the disguise 
of secure and seamless access to various government services. The new system will supersede the handy signature, the digital ID platform currently in use by Austrians because they already have one right now. And remember, we talked about this. Effectively pushing about 2.8 million people to adjust to an ID Austria. At present, the new digital ID system is used by 1.5 million Austrians according to the local, uh, to the local, that's their local rag there. The digital le uh, Leviathan forces everyone to comply. Citizens will otherwise be barred from a wide range of essential government services. And this does not guarantee security. And people are giving up more freedoms for protection that does not exist. Thank you, Nicholas, for the super chat. All right, let's move along here. Canadian nurse faces disciplinary hearings for social media posts criticizing the mandates. So there it is right there, folks. They are, again, the censorship they, they're trying to roll in is horrendous. They are working hard to basically shut everybody up for the last three years. They want to focus on the war, 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 war. And remember, remember this lady? That told that that was telling people that Jesus came to her in a dream and told everyone to take the juice. Remember her? We covering that on Mike in the night with the speech she said at that university, at that at that uh, Catholic university or college or Christian university that Jesus came to this woman right here and told her that to tell everyone to take the juice. New York pushes online digital ID age verification law. And in yet another unsettling spree of privacy invasion, New York is putting uh, forth a series of questionable state bills obscenely framed as safeguarding young digital citizens, but one that would require platforms to verify the ID of users and open up a whole host of privacy and free speech issues. Spearheaded by New York State Senator Andrew Grounders and Assembly Member Nick these initiatives are openly encouraged by New York Governor Kathy Hochul. Of course, they, they want this because they want the last three years to disappear. Then it goes in to say something really interesting here. The SAFE Act strikingly resembles a similar bill in Utah, which we talked about, untouched as of yet by constitutional challenges, but expectedly the next in lineup. It, is, it only mirrors the Utah law, but incorporates aspects of California's age-appropriate design code, already deemed as unconstitutional by a federal judge. Such loose utilization and constitutional breaches openly exhibits the reckless grandstanding of their propagandists. Propagators, sorry. And what else is happening in censorship? The EU could pass its privacy message ban as early as next week. And again, folks, this is very important that I bring this up again. We brought this up on Mike in the Night, but I need to bring this up again because it's called chat control. Okay, if you want to know more about chat control, troll, we brought it up on our last censorship video that we made for you guys. Um, so there it is right there, folks, in a nutshell, your censorship news update. And I believe that this war is going to be front and center going forward as much as prolonged as it could be because Western media and Western news and Western governments want the last three years to disappear. And I'm sending prayers to Owen and his family for this. This is absolutely disgraceful what's happening to him and his family and his, you know, his coworkers, everybody that's is being affected by this i owen i send you a prayer buddy i really do wholeheartedly and i really hope the best this is really really scary that it's happening on american soil with the amount of video footage with the amount of evidence with the amount of everything that's spewing that you could pretend you could see that nothing was a threat and people were ushered through the capitol building almost like they were on tour the security guards and police put these people on tour of the facility and that's what was happening there so anyways okay so let's move on folks all right u.s west blind support for israel root cause of genocide in gaza iran's president tells putin all right guys let's go back i got another super chat thanks thanks rami 42 no no, no. Ron, ron g 42 for the super chat and who else i haven't seen I haven't seen any crazies in here in this chat. And then um, Craig is saying, I'm so happy to be a normal person. Vinny V is saying, this is what what his Israel, do they bring up hate? 
so this the comments are moving forward here folks as we move forward um okay u.s west blind support for israel root cause of genocide in gaza iran's president tells putin and that's the headline right there and this is what the uh press tv is stating on the other side Iranian President Ebram Risi says blind support of Western countries, particularly the United States, for Israel has given the Zionists an in incentive to intensify their crimes and continue genocide against the Palestinian people in Gaza. And watch Israel target Hezbollah bases in Lebanon after border skirmishes. So they got videos here. You can watch this on X, folks, if you want to watch it live on, well, not live, a replay on X. So it looks like footage released by the IDF showing the destruction of multiple Hezbollah operation bases in southern Lebanon by Israeli air forces over the last 24 hours. What? Wow. Look at that, folks. Let's keep going, folks. Israel denies ceasefire plans after Iran said Hamas willing to release hostages if airstrikes stop. Putin gets involved. Again, chess pieces are moving. The 4D or 5D or 10D chess we've been talking about the last 10 years on this channel. Pieces are moving all around, folks. And an active session of Israelis, Kenset in Jerusalem, has been interrupted by a barrage of rockets fired from the Gaza Strip, which... Uh, sent members of parliament into bomb shelter. Sirens blared across Jerusalem as Hamas rocket attacks continue. Israel Israel's all-off-out offensive was expected Friday and or Saturday, but it's still been delayed, with Iran and with with Iran and bad weather also being among the list of reasons cited as of Monday. But this gave time for a flurry of international diplomacy as the death toll soars on both sides. The Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics said that the death toll among Palestinians and the West Bank is now at its highest in two decades for 2023. As deaths from this round of fighting has surpassed 3,000 deaths in Israel have surpassed 1,400 with over 4,100 Israelis wounded. So... Again, they're going to keep this going for as long as they can. Now, Press TV is reporting Israel will be gone soon as victory belongs to the Palestinians, leaders advised. And thousands flee Gaza as Israel moves full steam ahead with military invasion that will slaughter innocent women, children, and civilians. And that's why we told you guys right out of the gate while this was happening live on Saturday on Mike in the Night that we don't take sides. We never take sides in this. The people at fault is the American administration, the Israeli, Israeli administration, the Palestinian administration, Hamas administration, um, um, whatever, Egypt, everybody's administration is at fault. Not the people in the middle, not the, the, the innocent women and children, men, women and children, and everybody that are on the ground in the middle of this BS. And Israel told Zelensky not to visit, says media. So Zelensky is becoming now being put on the back burner. Nobody cares about this guy. No one did. Uh, the people that were on the ball knew from day one, like we said, we didn't take sides with this conflict back and forth. And the Ukrainian president was reportedly told the Times... Uh, the time is not right to visit amid the conflict with Hamas. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky had reported wish to visit Israel as a gesture of solidarity in the aftermath of the conflict between the country and Palestine militant group Hamas. However, Israel media reported on Monday that he was advised against visiting. So they're, they're putting it nice and, nice and lightly here, you know. And Iran asked China to intervene to stop war on Gaza. Again, we're getting more and more... Here it is, folks. This is it. What can I tell you? This is it. So they're getting more and more countries to jump in. Um, Zelensky tried that with Poland and other countries, and everyone just ignored Zelensky. This is a different can of worms we're opening here. This is a different can of worms. Iran's foreign minister, uh, Hossein Emri Abdelazhan, has, has called on China to intervene to put the end to the ongoing carnage in the Gaza Strip where Israel is carrying out uh, incessant attacks against the civil civilian population living in the enclave. So they're getting China, they're getting more and more other countries to be pulled into this or sucked into this canister. And Catholic patriarch 
of Jerusalem offers himself in exchange for child hostages held by Hamas. So Cardinal Pirabibis, I can't read that, Pizzaballa, Patriarch of Jerusalem and the Papal representative of the Holy Land on Monday offered to exchange himself for the Israeli children taken hostage during the savage Hamas attack last weekend. The exact number of people kidnapped from the Israeli border villages by Hamas is not known to the public, but the various authorities estimate a number of 150 to 200, including at least a dozen children. So this this um, patriarch, Catholic patriarch of Jerusalem offers himself. And that wraps up, folks, our war news. Let's go to your comments here. Let's go to the comments. Okay, so, uh, comments are moving nicely on Rumble. We don't got it. We got one person watching on Rumble. And there's no comments. And on Odyssey, it looks like we we got three people, four people on Odyssey. Sorry, four people watching on Odyssey Live. And it looks like our Twitter stream didn't go through. Kick, Kick is not working. Kick, we're off a of Kick again. I don't know what to do with Kick. And Twitch is Twitch is streaming. No, nope. yeah, it's streaming. D Live streaming. So it looks like everything seems to be going through nicely. So yeah, all right. So let's go back to our comments here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, 199 hostages of who? Someone's asking in the comments. And how many are alive? That's the question. And 20,000 bots. No, 20,000 bombs. Okay. Uh, American boots in it, uh, in Israel is only going to escalate this. Yes, it is. Definitely. That's from Juan Bon. They are in the comments. Uh, what has this world come to? Says Desi. Matt saying flash and uh, hi Mike, you're the man. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, what else? Someone, someone's telling me that some terrorist somewhere somehow made a video to show his own face. All right, so let's go back into a few more headlines, guys. This is just average Mike episode six with your average discussion and your average news in your average headlines and you know you're just just average this is just an average show bringing you average discussion and average um well, you know what i mean just average stuff right and um okay so let's go into all right let's go into another quick channel plug guys i want to thank everyone that's been supporting the transmission it really 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 means a lot to me that you guys are taking the time i'll put a link here okay so Let's go into... So, guys, don't forget to join us on Mike in the Night if you can. That's what Mike in the Night looks every Saturday, 6 p 7 p.m. Pacific Time. That's 9 p.m. Atlantic Time. 7, 8, 9... 10 p.m. Atlantic Time, sorry. And it's like noon uh, Australia time on the Sunday, on your Sunday in Australia. And I really appreciate all the people that called in and all the support and all the people that bought me coffee. It really means a lot to me. It really means a lot to me that my efforts are worth something and that um, you guys find some value in this. And it really means a lot. And guys, uh, don't forget to, if you want to uh, shop, link in the description if you guys want to pick up the glutathione I've been on. I've been on the glutathione now three months and I feel incredible. I feel plugged. I feel uh, like plugged as in I'm wired correctly. I feel good. I feel... I don't know. I just feel different I uh, in a good way. And I thought it was a placebo thing for a while. Then it wasn't. And, and nothing's wearing off. I'm not too sure what to say. So I'm just going to keep telling, taking this. And I'll leave a link right now here in the live chat. There. And I'll leave a link in the live Rumble chat. We don't even have two people watching us on Rumble. But good news, there's... Lots of people getting a lot of pickup on Rumble. Again, then those are picks, and those are Rumble heroes, right? And Rumble heroes are big. Um, they they like to call them editors' picks now or whatever. But and if you bought me a coffee and you looked looking to buy me a coffee, thank you very much. I'll give you guys a link to that too. And I want to thank everyone for buying me a coffee. I, it really means a lot, guys. Coming from you guys, it means a lot to me. It really does. And. 
we are live on average bikes okay comments are rolling real nice so we got matt 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 matt's been really uh active here on the comments today and someone's saying that uh, crazy t is saying our boys are ready for conflict wherever it happens around the world i think he's talking about the american armed forces um yeah so okay let's move on folks to uh other stuff here that's going on on average mics your average your average discussion your average talk show and just when you think things weren't going to get any worse in Chicago, and we had no way Jose on Mike in the Night discussing this, at least 21 shot during weekend in Mayor Brandon Johnson's Chicago. And the sanctuary cities and these migrant housing and all this stuff is just going to get worse, and you will see civil unrest. You will start to see civil unrest from the patriotic Americans in God We Trust Americans. In God We Trust Americans will be the answer to 1984 is 1776. And you're going to see it. And with innocent people dying on the streets, people scared to go out of their own homes, it will reach a tipping point where people will just not, they just have no confidence in governments anymore. Right? We know this. You know this. And what's happening? At least 21 people were shot, three of them fatally, during the weekend in Mayor Brandon uh brandon johnson's d chicago uh abc7 chicago times reported the weekend's first fatal shooting occurred around 4 40 p.m saturday when 23 year old balstar gonzalez jr was shot fatally wounded while standing on a sidewalk in the 3400 block west of 24th street gonzalez was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead on Sunday morning, the man was shot and killed in the University Village neighborhood, and another man was shot and killed in the heart of Chicago neighborhood. The man was uh, the man who was killed in the University Village was discovered unresponsive in a car around 2:40. He had been shot in the back. I want to thank uh, CTLCG441 for the five nine dollar super ten dollar super chat. Sorry, ten dollar, ten dollar, ten dollar. Okay, China to unveil a new maritime cooperation initiative and Belt and Road Summit. Again, China's going to start renegotiating its own rules so that it could obviously monopolize on as much money it could make on its whatever Belt Road that the Portuguese had back in 1600s. The, the uh, uh, Chinese are copying that Belt Road that the Portuguese had uh, in the 1600s which was annihilated by the English, French, and Dutch and destroyed and made and branded Portuguese as pirates. Major plan uh, will, uh, will cover sustainable use of marine resources, biodiversity, conservation, and climate change, officials say. So representative in 130 nations and 30 global organizations will gather in Beijing for the, f for the forum that begins on Tuesday. Woo, there it is. So another with 130 nations for our countries to sign away our freedoms and to sign away everything from us. And that is what's going to happen. And that's what they're obviously aiming for. Really sad to see that they're having these global organizations, 130 nations behind our backs, signing bills to destroy us. Now, Ecuador re rejects socialist, elects 35-year-old outsider Daniel Noba as president. So Ecuador is rejecting their socialists. And Ukraine conflict conflict actually began in 2014, says Putin. I was wrong, guys. I've been telling you guys on Mike in the Night that it started in 2012. Putin obviously is, knows more than I do when it comes to that conflict. I thought it was 2012, but I was wrong two years. I'm sorry, guys. The launch of Mo Moscow's military campaign in February of last year was not the starting point of the Ukraine conflict. Russian Pre President Vladimir Putin has argued, he explained in an interview, that the underlying cause of the current hostilities dates back a decade. In an interview with a China media group published in f full on Monday, Putin noted that the hostilities in Ukraine did not start with our special military operation, but way before in 2014 he uh, recounted how Western countries who had acted as 
uh, guarantors of the agreement between then president president of Ukraine Viktor Yukchikov and the opposition reneged and instead supported a coup de detente, according to the Russian head of state. While Yukonovich may well have made certain mistakes in those years, those should have been addressed through democratic procedures rather than means of military in the streets. So we did cover that. We did cover that. Uh, we were covering that actually on and off. And then and then a few years down the road, we we're covering in 2016, 2017, we we're covering the, um, oh, what's that on Mike of the Night? We we're covering it. Catalonia, secession in the Catalonia between Spain and Catalonia and the conflict that was brewing. And basically anybody on the Catalonian separatist movement was branded as was was branded as criminals and put in jail for trying to secede from Spain. So we, we covered that in depth on 2016 and 2017 on Mike and I. So we've been seeing a lot of these conflicts brewing on and off all the years. And um, thank you for the super chats, RK. Really appreciate it. Celebrate the first super chat from RK. Thank you. So, um... Let's see if we could get a caller here. Just letting a caller know I'm live. If he wants to, somebody, somebody is uh, it's junkyard dog. And uh, let's see where he. Um... Oh, I got no more. I got no more audio. So basically, what Bill Gates did, and I was very upset earlier today. And what Bill Gates did was, I have to now go into my um, settings. And I actually have to go into audio and I actually have to go into, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I have, oh, there it is. It's Junkyard Dog live on Mike in the Night. Uh, sorry, uh, Average Mike's, how you doing, buddy? Average Mike, <laughs> good, how are you? I'm live right now, so just don't use certain words so I don't get banned. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So me. I. Oh, is that Poofy? Where are you? Me and Stitch. Oh, that's you and Stitch. Where are you? Tim Hortons. Oh, you're at Tim Hortons. Okay, the guys. That's Junkyard Dog live. We'll just show his his beautiful his beautiful mug here for you guys to see. You are live now on Average Mics. Are you okay, buddy? You doing okay? Yeah, buddy. I'm all right. It's my uh, my truck had to go in for a service. Um, what Tuesday? Tuesday night, I dropped it off, picked it up Friday, and there's there hasn't been a load for me this last week. I'm waiting this week. Uh, there's nothing today. There's something tomorrow, maybe. I think we got so junkyard dog is our uh, field reporter here. He's a truck driver up. He goes up and down Eastern Canada and uh, Eastern United States. And he keeps his yeah. eyes and ears open for us. And he's how's freight moving? Is freight moving at all? Freight's not good, buddy. There's lots of companies crying. Uh, we uh, there's people calling our company nonstop every day looking for anything because we farm out a bit of our work, right? We only have well, uh, one of our one of our main guys, owner operator guys, are he he packed it in. Uh, a few months ago, another owner operator packed it in and there's another one. So actually really there's only th three of us right now, but, uh, um, the other guy, the, he's going to be 65 and he's, he's packing her in too. He says, it's just not there. He says he's, he doesn't need to work for peanut wages. Understood. So you yeah. you go, so you you said the last haul you did you got no freight to come back and that's 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 killer. Yeah, yeah, there was a couple of trips there. I I, I waited a week. I I I got down there Tuesday, delivered, and, and in Atlanta, and there was nothing in South Carolina, North Carolina, Atlanta. There was nothing that paid. 
that was going to bring me home. Like we, we turned down a $1,700 load because it doesn't pay. Like we, you know, we've got a minimum that we uh, run for per mile so that we can kind of make a bit of a paycheck. Right. And buddy, there's just, we're, we're, we're in dire straits in the industry right now all yeah. across the board. Now, so you come back empty. You're obviously lo you're on your own dime. You're on your own dime, yeah. Wow. Now, well, I, let me ask you something. I don't. I know me. you've been watching. You know, you've been following me on and off, or follow me for a good, a little good chunk of time now. Remember oh, yeah. when I kept saying? Years now I think I think it's been at least a couple of years, pretty close to it. Now, my question to you is: This is I've been very vocal about this, and then I know this 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 has resonated with you. How I've been talking about how they want to federalize the trucking, the logistics, the transport. Do you see them federalizing it now, or is it, or am I just delusional? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the answer to that. Um, like, will the government I'm, take over all the shipping and and take it out of the owner operator's hands? And that's a bit. That's that's a really big animal. That's okay. that's a big animal because our. Our our overall fleet, or like in Canada, U.S., probably Mexico, our overall fleet is aging. The uh, equipment, mm -hmm. and 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 there's a lot of downtime with that. So companies are like we're leaning on each other to rescue loads, kind of thing. Right. That don't pay. Like it's. Uh, I know in the last three weeks, there's uh, three companies that, that I've heard of in in the GTA that have packed it in. Wow. Well, there, were this companies, is... there, there were companies that we used to use with a previous company I work, worked with. And one of our, one of the ones we work with packed, they're just packing it in hand over, like over and over. But now what's not to stop the government to say, I'll save you. Let's federalize all this now and federalize your wages and make sure you get paid a fair wage. And then realistically, they're just taking over the whole, the whole transportation. That's what I'm saying. Well, Are they going to yeah, federalize that, that, this? That's, that's going to go right from equipment. That, that, that animal, that's going to go right from equipment all the way to shipping, receiving wages uh if 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 the uh load brokers see their load brokers are taking a large percent like more than 50 percent of like if a load's posted at ten thousand dollars to go somewhere they're taking over 50 percent leaving you just crumbs that's crazy and then dude. it gets it, it could get double brokered or triple brokered and it's just it's bad yeah, because they start laying laying in with the different levels of uh, I call it laying in with different levels of of uh, theft. That's all it is. Yeah, all it is is theft. Yeah, it's it's a mafia. Like the the it's 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 one big mafia. They all kind of know each other, eh? Like the like the companies and the brokers, they all kind of know each other. Like they're it's the same people over and over. Like they get to know each other. Yeah, they know they. I, I know that just talking to some of my my upper people that uh companies are sticking together like they're not they're just not hauling cheap freight they're the last trip coming up when i crossed the border into into from buffalo to ontario i asked the border patrol i said there because he, he he didn't he he kind of gave me a hard time says why did it take you so long to come back I said, because there was no freight. I, yeah. I, so you I, were I, held. I, I, let's take a step back. You were held at the U.S. Canadian border, on the American yeah, side. Not, yeah, not hold, not held. Just ask ask the question. Why did it take so long for you to come back this time? It took like eight days to do to do an Atlanta like a Carolinas Atlanta run. Should only take four or five. Right. So they were questioning you why it took so long to come back, and did you you told them that I was looking for something to bring back, right? Look, looking for something to bring back. And I asked him, I said, is there a lot of trucks coming back empty? He says, there is a ton of trucks coming back empty. He said, you guys are all coming back empty, a lot of you. 
This is major. This is huge major. And you would think that we would want more stuff made in America or produced in America or fabricated in America. Obviously, they have a population of 300 plus million and they are they do have stuff we need up here, too. Right. Yeah, that's absolute for for production of products, for ingredients, for food and material. Yeah, absolutely. Michael, my, I, I wanted to, I was like, if, I know we got to be careful what we say here, but I, uh, like this, this polyev is not going to save us. I'm sorry to tell everybody. No, no, no. Yeah, I made, you know how, you know, I made a few videos. I made a video two years ago saying that. Yeah, he's and not going to save us. Nobody's like, coming to he, save Canadians. They can't. Nobody. The nobody, only way they could save Canadians is if they, again, scrap the money laundering. Uh, do a big international, do a big internal uh, audit yeah. on all the money that was laundered through Canada. Which yeah. homes are empty? How much was it purchased through illegal funds? Uh, fentanyl sales, fentanyl coming in from China. It's a big job. Like it's a big I'm internal ma- job that needs to be done. And if they do yeah. do it, 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 it would, it, it yeah, it, yeah. So he can't do that. And and I, another I, problem. He can't balance the books. There's too much public no. servants. There's too many people working for the government. How the hell is he going to balance the books? Well, well, he did. He did say in one of his little podcasts there I watched. Uh, they're 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 part of their mission is to reclaim these homes that are empty from oh, the uh, money launderers. Good luck with that. I've been saying that's, it for the last ten years. Yeah. That's part of his mission. He wants to reclaim all the empty homes and. But you want to know something, Mike? In 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 the big picture of it all here, is he says Paul Vere says, uh, he he wants to build homes. Okay, I understand that. But his trucking company after trucking company is friggin' going bankrupt right now. Where and and it's only a certain amount of certain bunch of us that do this for a living. If you if you cut the grass under our feet and wipe us out who who are you going to get to build your homes where's who's going to deliver the lumber and the cement and the and the and the, and all the stuff that goes with building you know a because lot of we're all going bankrupt and you know what the sad part what americans don't know and can from, from canada side yes homes land everything's expensive one thing they don't know that is that to build a house let's say in rural ontario on a little piece of land to build a house, you're looking at two to four, two to four hundred thousand dollars for an average home to build because the materials are so yeah. expensive. Now, to build that same home, let's say in Tucson, Arizona, or Albuquerque, New Mexico, to build the exact same home, you could probably get it done for under sixty-five thousand. Well, yeah, I, I believe that. But Paul Avere says the gatekeepers here in Canada aren't the the bureaucracy like you. The contractors have to pay millions of dollars just for permits and clearance to build. That's on top of the house price, which they get out of when they sell the houses for millions of dollars. But we're we're not we're not buying houses for millions of dollars because we don't have the money. The money launderers are most of, most Canadians are only living on friggin' minimum wage. Like I wanted to talk about. Living wage. We need to push living wage. 40, 45 bucks an hour, I think, would be a living wage in today's technology. Not a minimum and wage. Minimum wage is minimum wage. You're not going to put the pressure on the corporate, let's say, Burger King and McDonald's. It's not their fault, right? That's yeah. just a minimum wage job. When I was a kid, a minimum wage job is to keep you going through summer. When you're done grade 9, you go to a summer job. Grade 10, you go to your summer job. Grade 11, you go to your summer job. You do your summer jobs. That's a minimum wage. And you live with your parents. You save enough money to go to college. Now they want to make minimum wage a living wage, which is not good. I'm ta- You're talking about the middle class, blue and white collar workers in the middle yeah. of it all. Not the minimum wage, but the middle class workers that yeah. need to make 50, 40, 50 bucks an hour for their pay off their universities, pay off their colleges, pay off and put a down payment on a damn house. Yes. Mike, also, have you been to a dealership lately? Do you know the these contractors that come and physically build your house have to get to and from work with their tools? Mm-hmm. What's the price of a pickup or a van today? Can like, you tell me? In, in Canada, like, 110,000. Yeah, like for there you go. 110. So where, hold on, let me so finish. Got, let me finish. Yeah. 110,000 yeah. and my friend priced out the same truck that he wanted to buy in northern 
uh, just outside of Mobile, Alabama, the same truck. He priced out at a dealer there, 39000 yeah. American. With the exchange, he was looking at 61000 Canadian all in. Yeah, like I, I've been looking at trucks lately, like 15, 16, 17. You're, you're going to get a beater that's got two, 300,000 kilometers on it, and they're still asking 20,000, 30,000 for it. That yeah. is just nuts. And you can go to somewhere you in the mean, rural states and pick up the same truck for two grand. So, yeah. So, you, 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 so Paul Avery, you're on the right track, but you're, you completely don't, you're, you've completely missed it. Like, these people have to get to, to and from to build which they can't afford the vehicle to do that with on their wages. It's not living wages. And, and the truckers are going bankrupt. I like there's, there's people that I know selling like they're, they're getting rid of all their shit. When you go up Dixie road and you go into Toronto and see all the truck lots, they're completely full of trucks and equipment. That's wow. not selling. It's not selling because there's no work for it. People aren't buying. Uncle B in the comments is asking you a question. If do you see the United States and um, and Canada unifying in one country? Uh, I kind of I, I I wish they would. Like I, I I'd like to have a cons. We we should have the Constitution of the United States. It should be joined. It should be merged together with an Amero dollar. We should. We, we should be a part in order for if we're going to sink or swim. We're, we're sinking and together we can maybe do something. I, I, I would think that cause we're like brothers, we're like brothers, Canada hmm. and U S are like brother, sister, like, uh, we, I, I don't know. It, it, like economically it would make sense but the problem is canada doesn't want to yeah. here's the problem china owns a lot of canada a lot a lot of our mines are a lot of lithium ion mines coal mines <laughs> so that's the problem yeah. so china doesn't want a merger with canada the united states because china would lose a lot of its assets <laughs> absolutely and that's a, absolutely yeah so i think china know, would go to war with I, the u.s before it gives up canada when i when i as a canadian truck driver or anybody any canadian so so for me to buy a hundred dollars american right now cost me 141 canadian 100 like almost half of our money canadian money to buy a hundred dollar bill mm -hmm. 141 dollars could you like that's, that's expensive yeah that's how it was back in i think it was when they launched the gulf war there with uh, the second Gulf War there with uh, George Bush, the American dollar yeah. skyrocketed to about a dollar forty-seven, a dollar forty-one. I remember that because uh, I wish, yeah, I wish, I wish I could remember when our dollar was par with theirs, Canada and U.S. That was back in oh six, three, four, five, maybe. Mike is saying thoughts and prayers for Junkyard Dog. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. It's tough out here. I'm going to tell you guys like. It is tough. Like it's expensive at the truck stops. It's expensive fuel, tolls, insurance, plates. Like you don't realize what it what it is to get food, ingredients, materials to you. It is it's killing us. We're we're dropping off like flies. Man, it's it's scary to it's and the replacement. It's do you see this more as as us Canadians or European expansion being replaced? I'm not sure what's up their sleeve. I know what you're saying to being replaced. I don't know. I, I don't. I, there's something in the works. It's like you said before in 2019. Something in the works. Something so there's big, something, so big. It's either going to be a hot war or they're going to pull a trigger on the pandemic. We're seeing both of there, them now. There's going to be something so big in the transportation industry because they're saying the the first this this third quarter is going to be the same going into the first quarter of 24, they say. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's no, like, this should be because of the holiday season, because winter, because, you know, people need, uh, you know, gear and stuff. Uh, it's slow. Like, there's, it's slow, and it's going to carry on into 24. Yeah. But I, and I just got a thing in the mail. My, my MP, Colin Carey of... Uh, in Oshawa here, he's Conservative Party. 
he just sent me this card saying there could be an, an early snap election, so be prepared. Yeah, well, they're gonna uh, Canada. This, I don't know what's gonna. I, I just wish. I just hope the Americans don't give up their guns, keep their constitution, you and you have to keep your guns, guys. Keep your guns. Buy a gun to replace the gun and protect the gun. Mm -hmm. Buy a gun to protect the next gun. That's what I would say. Protect. Buy a gun to protect your next gun. All right, junkyard. I'm rolling into my first hour here. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, buddy. And I really appreciate you updating us here on Average Mics. And yeah, we'll, buddy. We'll get you back on. And if you can, uh, maybe maybe you could do an appearance on our uh, Mike of the Night on Rumble if you want. And uh, sure, buddy. All right, man. Thanks so much, buddy. All right. Take care. Take say, care. Say hey to everybody and uh, everybody that's listening. Talk to you later. Appreciate it. All right. God bless, buddy. Bye. All right, folks, that is Junkyard Dog. He was on thing. It's like, hey, I'm seeing you live. So so there it is right there. Now, um, yeah. All right, guys, I'm rolling into my first hour, and I'm going to terminate, end the show here. It's been great being with you guys, talking with you guys, laughing with you guys, chatting with you guys, and thanks for supporting the transmission and being part of the channel. I'll see you guys live on Mike in the Night on Saturday night. And thank you so, so much to everybody and their contributions and all that stuff. Everything is in the description of the video below if you want to support the transmission. And signing off, thank you, Rich, and uh, who is this? Wrath, and everybody in the comments section here, and Mello, and everybody here that's been very vocal and uh, here on the live stream. Mike Martin's here. Thanks for tuning in to Average Mike's Episode 6. I have spoken. <laughs>